What's up everybody, Band and Chad here for another Taco Tuesday. And if you missed last week's video, we did get a really positive response out of that video in a whole as a whole. Uh, but there were a couple little issues with that. Right, so we wanted to just start by addressing that. Uh, there were some uh, noise complaints uh, with uh, last week's video, so we wanted to apologize. Uh, last week we did have the truck running, had the air going, so we think it may have been a combination of where you all are sitting right now, which is right on the dash above the head unit, and we believe that maybe there was just some uh, vibrations coming from the fact that the truck was running, uh, the air may have been on, anything like that. The weird thing is when I was editing the video, it didn't really seem to have that noise at all, so at some point when it was processed, uh, it amplified any noise that we couldn't pick up beforehand. Right, so let's get down to business with this new topic. And really, the next wave of off-road vehicles is coming very, very quickly. So Ford is really stepping up their game and really trying to go more into SUVs and trucks. We've seen this now that they're killing off the Fiesta and the Focus for at least the American market, and they're bringing back the Ranger, which will be built stateside, correct? Yes, so this is the first time in quite a few years that the Ranger is being built back in the United States uh, for years ever since it had left the United States. It has been manufactured in other countries for those markets other than the US. This is the first time that it's coming back and being built in their Wayne plant, which is in Michigan. Uh, and that is the one that used to produce the Focus. Uh, hatchback and uh, I believe just their regular sedan. Correct. And uh, you know, this is kind of sad. We will be seeing the cars leave, uh, but I think a lot of people are really excited about this new truck. Now, a lot of the numbers are out. It looks like it's going to get a little bit better fuel economy and have a little bit higher uh, capacity in terms of payload and towing mm -hmm. than our current truck, which is interesting because it does have uh, a 10 speed automatic and it does have the uh, four-cylinder turbo all across the board. So whether you get the base work truck or you get one of the upgraded trim levels, you will be getting that engine. Now, I regretfully say this, it looks like we're not getting the Ranger Raptor. It looks like Ford has been saying that for the price that that would cost and just the market that it fits into, uh, that is pretty much an overseas only thing. Uh, it will be being sold in pretty much every other market where they don't sell the Raptor, uh, but they're thinking just on those tighter streets and uh, with emissions and everything like that, and especially being taxed based off of displacement, they would be better off uh, selling that vehicle in those other markets. And it looks like we probably, probably will not get that here. Now don't directly quote us on this. It hasn't been seen and possibly with enough of your all's input uh, being given to Ford, perhaps they would produce it, but it looks like more than likely uh, in, again, in, in terms of keeping costs down and everything like that, uh, we probably will just be seeing, I'm sure an FX4 package, you know, the XLT, sure. the Lariat, those kind of packages, but probably not a Ranger Raptor. Right. Right. So speaking of other off-roaders, um, Suzuki is kind of bringing something back too, aren't they? Absolutely. So uh, some of y'all that watch us overseas or uh, in other countries, you may be pretty familiar with the Suzuki Jimny. Now the Jimny is basically the size of a renegade and actually I wasn't very familiar with them until I went to Barbados and those things are absolutely everywhere in Barbados. It looks right. like a ship showed up one day, they dumped them all and left and, right. and that's the whole, pretty much the only vehicle that they have there. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are a very, very popular vehicle. Again, it is about the size of a renegade, uh, but it is a little bit more off-road capable. It does have a true four-wheel drive system with low range. It does have solid axles front and rear. Um, and they've, they have been produced for the past couple of years, but even when they were produced, it was kind of a niche vehicle. They only sold, you know, maybe a thousand units, 1500 units a year, somewhere in there. Right. Um, not really a whole lot. Well, they are bringing it back with all new styling and it's kind of a cool, uh, retro themed little vehicle. I would personally absolutely love to have one. Oh, they right. are offered in an automatic transmission and it is a four cylinder gas motor. Mm -hmm. But currently already on Suzuki's website, they have 5,000 people that are interested in the next one. Now, I am one of them. Obviously, uh, whether they bring it to America is a little bit of a question. I really, really hope they could, but we'll talk about that here in a second. But they are <laughs> pretty astounded by the amount of uh, support they have for this vehicle and the number of people they, are, they have interested in it. Uh, again, it, I believe they said that's a 150% increase from any other year where they ever sold that vehicle. So a lot more people are interested in it this year than, than any other time. And again, a lot of it is probably with the updated kind of quirky retro looks. I personally think it's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd love to hear your all's input on that. Um, and it looks like it's probably not coming to America again. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, Suzuki, when they left, kind of cut a lot of their ties mm -hmm. with the 
automakers that are still here in America. For a, a short period of time, they were working with General Motors, and that's actually how we got the sidekick and uh, the tracker. Uh, the, the tracker, exactly. Yeah. It was kind of a, a joint venture there, uh, and they sold a lot of those vehicles. Unfortunately, they're plagued by rust, and a lot of them are going away pretty rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, but also, uh, if I read this correctly, uh, Fiat actually has a certain stake in there, and they're actually still selling the F SX4 little hatchback, all-wheel drive hatchback uh, that Suzuki had, rebranded as a Fiat overseas, which if that's the case, uh, hopefully they would maintain some sort of working relationship you with so. either General Motors or with Fiat Chrysler now. Mm -hmm. If they could bring that here, whether they call it a Renegade or you know whatever, yeah. I, I think the Jimny nameplate would be fine. I mean, obviously they don't have a huge Suzuki dealer network unless it's Power Sports, which would be hard to sell a full vehicle in, in a Power Sports dealer. Exactly, because they are more focused on the smaller exactly. type uh, vehicles, whatever that may be. But this does bring up an interesting thing because since you and I have gotten more involved with this uh, off-road off culture, I feel like at the same time, a lot of these smaller track vehicles have become more and more popular. When we've been out there in Uari and um, Harlan, Kentucky, we see all these smaller vehicles and we know of people that do have uh, older Suzukis, uh, whether it be a Sidekick, a Samurai, or even some old CJs that we see. And they're just really, really capable off-road, even in stock form. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of the off-road trends now are going more towards the side-by-side -side market. And those mm -hmm. things are becoming incredibly capable and incredibly expensive. Um, expensive. That's exactly right. Um, but we both personally feel like there is a gap in the market here because all these vehicles are getting exponentially more expensive really right. uh, for a back to basics bare bone four wheel drive vehicle now you say well that's a jeep wrangler well actually i just built a jeep wrangler this morning and if you want power windows and power locks and absolutely nothing else you're still looking at north of thirty thousand dollars and that's for a manual transmission two-door soft top jeep that's this is the JL, correct? Correct. That, that is a JL. And obviously, you can get rebates or whatever on the JK right. that are still left around. But that's incredibly expensive. It's still pretty darn expensive. Especially for a vehicle that's not nearly as... It's very capable, don't get me wrong, but it's not a universal vehicle. You know, here in our trucks, that cost roughly the same price. You have a bed, you have four doors. Uh, at least in Chad's truck, I kind of have four doors, depending <laughs> on how you count them. But right. um, those are really a more rounded vehicle for the price and Jeeps are really just ballooning in price in my opinion. Uh, obviously they are getting more and more options on them but I think that still leaves a pretty good gap for something to undercut them still with good off-road performance but maybe without all the creature comforts. Right. Now you may be thinking with all this Ford talk that Ford is about to enter the game again and you are correct. Uh, the Bronco is coming and they're saying there's probably what it's not really named yet, but more than likely a baby Bronco coming as well. So maybe one that's the size of the Ranger and might share some components off of that. We're speculating here still. Right. Uh, you see a lot of sketches that look like actually the third generation Bronco, the larger one that is based off the old F-150s floating around there on the internet. That is not confirmed. That is purely speculation. I hope it is built like that. It would be awesome if it is, mm. uh, but we still need to wait a little bit longer to see all of that. Uh, and the baby Bronco, I'm guessing, is going to be something similar to the Renegade. Probably a crossover based, but more outdoorsy focused little SUV or so. crossover. Um, but again, all of that remains to be seen. Uh, the only other competitor that is kind of a two-door off-roader that's still out there, uh, at least within the past five years, is the FJ Cruiser, actually. True. And I really like the FJ Cruiser, don't get me wrong, but I think Toyota kind of priced themselves out of it. Mm -hmm. They were a fairly similar price to the 4Runner uh, and similar size for all that matter. And I think a lot of people just for practicality reasons went with the 4Runner instead of the FJ Cruiser. They did. And I think one of the reasons, I mean, kind of echoing off of what you had said about practicality, um, those back seats were really difficult right. in the FJ Cruiser. I mean, the way that you just maneuver into it, it wasn't super practical. Um, definitely a good vehicle for, say, one person or maybe a couple who had um, a dog and they may have done these off-road uh, weekend warrior type uh, trips mm -hmm. and they're definitely worth something now that Toyota doesn't produce them of course right um, and you can occasionally find them for an okay price used but sometimes they've been beat up and of course yeah, depending on uh, how well it was taken care of could be a little rusty because right. it does share a lot of components between either the 4Runner and the Tacoma same engine and transmission things like that right and one thing 
that we're kind of getting at here. I think if they would have produced the FJ Cruiser exactly how it was, but two, at two thirds of the size and two thirds of the price, I think we would have seen a whole lot more of them out on the road. Mm -hmm. You know, something not necessarily like a RAV4, I think it's still important to keep that body on frame design I with agree. at least a solid rear axle, you know, solid front axle would be great, but keep it more simple, keep it cheaper, uh, have it more accessible. You know, all the time they talk about how young people aren't really interested in buying vehicles and it's not necessarily that they aren't interested in having the latest vehicle, mm -hmm. it's that vehicles keep getting more and more expensive. Uh, obviously the options drive up the price, but as vehicles get more expensive, either more people lease or more people buy used. Uh, I think last year, actually people bought more used cars than ever before. I and, would agree. Um, you know, all that is due to the pricing. So we'd really love to hear what you all think about all of this. Uh, we obviously think that there is a gap in the market and a bare bones small SUV, I think would be great. If they bring the Jiminy here, I would have one the very first day. I would put my money down right now if they said they were bringing one here. I would absolutely love to have that vehicle. And I think a lot of people kind of share my mentality I with that. I would agree. But overall, again, let us know what you all think in the comments below. We do really appreciate all of the support uh, and the growth of the channel. All that is thanks to you all. We will be having a live stream here in the next couple of weeks. So if you have any questions, keep those in mind. Or as always, drop those in the comment section as well. Uh, and we'll try to get back to those as soon as possible. But thank you all very much for watching. Have a fantastic week, everybody. We'll catch you next time. See you guys.